What is this scene about? What is that image in the distance? The opening scene for Koi no Katachi explains the entire movie, and I will help you understand it. Throughout the movie and books, the concept of karma always arises. Shoya deserves his punishment for what he has done and does not deserve to be happy. Shoko's mother deserves to raise a deaf child for something she must have done, and Shoko deserves to be deaf because of something she must have done in her past life. In Buddhism, one of the main beliefs is reincarnation. Your next life is determined by your actions in your current or previous lives. With this in mind, Shoya begins as a bully, but eventually he attempts to make amends. During this process, Shoya learns that no matter how hard he tries, he can never give Shoko the happy childhood that he took away from her. He can never change his attitude of isolation, and he can never erase a scar on Shoko's ear. He will never truly understand Shoko even after learning sign language. It is a shallow attempt of understanding. He does not understand how she feels, no one understands how she feels, and she does not understand how others feel. Shoko constantly wears a mask of happiness and apologies because she does not want her family to be hurt by the harassment. However, she does not realize the strain of confusion it puts on the family and others around her. The only scene where she truly expresses how she feels is when Shoya threw her notebook in the pond and decided not to pick it up. She returned home to Yuzuru, taking off her mask. I want to die. Why was Shoko so shaken up by that action alone? She has been bullied and harassed countless other times, but her smile never wavered. This notebook was the most precious item to Shoko. It was her voice to the world. She would write in permanent ink, let's be friends. During the bullying, others would write mean things, but she still carried around as the hopes of communication to others. When Shoya threw the notebook in the pond, she had decided to give up. She had stopped communicating with the world. She had marked everyone's faces with an X. This is why Shoko was so accepting of Shoya when he gave her back the book. Shoya had given back her voice. This is also the reason why she suddenly jumped in the river to achieve her book. It was her voice she had given up before, and she did not want to lose it again. The story continues to follow Shoko and Shoya's journey with their depression and thoughts of suicide. The two always meet and return to the river where they feed the koi fish. Legend says that there was a school of golden koi fish who swam upstream the Yellow River in China. When the fish reached the waterfall, they were met with malicious demons who mocked and heightened the waterfall. Many of the fish turned away, but after a hundred years, one fish was able to leap to the top of the waterfall, reaching the dragon's gate, transforming into a dragon. Perseverance, strength, and overcoming obstacles are a common symbol for koi fish. In the beginning, we see a small school of koi, five gray and one colored koi, swimming away. Each koi represents a character in the story and how they all struggle with their own personal demons. Nagatsuki lies and lives in a fantasy. He constantly lies about having numerous friends, bribing school children to pose for his lie. His movie lives in a dramatization and fantasy of his life when he met Shoya, Ueno, and the others. Ueno is very similar to Shoya, but her efforts never come close due to her brash nature and subtle lack of empathy. Like Shoya, she is uncomfortable with her past self and tries to make amends to the people she bullied by befriending Sahara, Shoya, and the others. She tries to reunite Shoya and Shimada, similar to how Shoya did with Shoko and Sahara. She tells the exact same thing to Kawaii as Shoya did. She is unsure and willing to confess her feelings towards Shoya, similar to how Shoya feels it is wrong to befriend Shoko. The only difference between Ueno and Shoya is that she continues to load and impulsively act. She does not attempt to change, but try to change others instead. Mashiba acts in the name of his own justice, his false justice. Because he was bullied, he feels the need to oppose others in the name of righteousness. This is shown when he sprays water as Takeuchi sensei expresses his thoughts, when Shoya discusses with him about Shoko's bullying, and finally, in acting on it when he punched Shoya at the bridge. Sahara is the first koi to swim away from the waterfall. She runs at the sight of conflict. She does not address her problems, but simply hides from them, hoping to not encounter others. However, over time, she does manage to face her fears, like befriending the nasty girl who made fun of her, and eventually becoming her business partner. Kawaii is just... a bitch. Similar to the witch at Snow White, she looks in the mirror, seeing the image of a beautiful girl, but does not recognize what others see. A faker, a narcissist, a girl in delusion. 
Mashiba even proposed a hypothetical to Hawaii about a person who just laughed but did no bullying, and she immediately answered that person is at fault as well, but did not see through Mashiba's metaphor. The last fish, the colored koi fish, represents Shoya and Shoko. The koi represents their journey, their thoughts of suicide, and their rebirth as a powerful dragon. Although Shoya had given back Shoko's book, her voice to the world, she could not communicate her true feelings. Shoya could also not communicate his true feelings. Shoya and Shoko both contemplate suicide. They both feel they are a burden to the people around them. They both face suffering. They feel unworthy to approach the world and find happiness. Shoya never truly stops his contemplation of suicide. Instead, he is pushed back by others like his mother who yells at him. Shoya decides his one purpose in his useless life is to make Shoko happy. Not understand her, but make her happy. This is his biggest mistake, as Shoko had done as well. Shoko understands that she causes others trouble. She is not deaf to the world. She understands her burden to her family. She understands the backlash and why her mother has to be strict. She realizes that in order to do right, she tries to make others happy, not herself. This is the reason for always smiling, always apologizing. She doesn't want to make anyone sad. This is also the reason for feeding the koi fish. Similar to how Shoya does his best to make Shoko happy, Shoko feeds the fish to make them happy. After the bridge scene, Shoko's smile slowly fades away. She cannot keep her mask on any longer. She concludes that despite her efforts, she can do nothing but cause pain and suffering to others around her. To allow Shoya to enjoy his life, to allow no more burdens, to make Shoya happy, she decides to end it. In the beginning, Shoko jumps off a bridge through Chi of her book, and Shoya could not reach her. Not only is this foreshadowing, but it explains that Shoya cannot reach her yet. He cannot understand her yet. Shoya prays to replace Shoko, to die in her place. Shoko cries for forgiveness, but she is not heard by Ueno and Shoya's mom. His mom's voice has been taken away. She cannot accept her apology until Shoya wakes up. Ueno's voice has been taken away. She shuts herself from the world, by literally shutting the door on anyone who wants to visit Shoya in the hospital. In Shoko's dream, she views messages from Shoya, similar to how he would have written in her notebook. She finally understands why Shoya has been doing these things. She understands that he felt the same. They both hold on to the past dearly, like a storming current. They could not swim against it. They could not move forward. They viewed the world as if they were the reason for others around them to struggle as well. In desperation, she cries out of her misery, hoping her voice could reach Shoya to come back, to move forward with her. Shoya is reborn. He has been reincarnated, a chance to correct his wrongs in his new life. Shoko had confessed her true feelings of suicide, and they are both able to reconcile each other with the efforts of living by moving forward together, not just living for each other. Beginning his new life, Shoya is still not able to face the world, but now Shoko and Shoya finally understand each other, Shoko is able to connect with Shoya, holding his hand, able to trek through the crowd. Shoya has begun his new reincarnated life, with the help of Shoko and his friends around him. To face it, to move forward towards a brighter future. Although, it is a lot easier to walk towards the light when you have someone beside you. Mm -hmm.